All praise is due to Allah. We thank Him. We seek His help. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our deeds. Whoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide. And whoever Allah allows to go astray, there is none to guide. And I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the only God who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. As to what follows, all slaves of Allah, I urge you and myself to have the taqwa and righteousness of Allah and obey Allah. And I warn myself and all of you from disobeying Allah. Allah says in translation, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and say words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has attained a great attainment. O oh, you Muslims, fear Allah as he should be feared, and be mindful of your deeds. When you are alone and when you are with people, whoever has the taqwa of Allah, Allah will give him a way out of every calamity and provide him from ways he cannot even think of. And whoever relies on Allah, Allah will suffice him. Whoever relies on Allah, Allah will suffice him. Allah has indeed created everything according to a certain measurement. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was sent by Jibreel's uttering the words, Iqra, Iqra, read in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clot of blood. Read and your Lord is the most honorable who has taught with the pen, taught man that which he knew not. So he started this light which has emanated to this universe and Muhammad, peace be upon him, started calling people after Allah Almighty has sent down the verses Aya ayyuha al oh O you covered with garment, get up and purify your garments and call on to people to come to pray to Allah and worship Allah. And Allah said to him, and warn your closest of your kinship, your tribe. So he started with his cousins, with his closest people, and they did not respond. Then he, peace be upon him, went to Ta'if, calling people to Allah, and you knew what has happened to him there. Then he would come back to Mecca, and still some are embracing Islam, and they were vulnerable, they were poor, and they do not have any means of living. But the first people who embraced Islam are the ones who were the poor, the slaves, and the vulnerable ones. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, allows them to migrate the first time and then the second time. And then it is allowed for the Prophet afterward to migrate to Medina. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I was shown this house of migration that has two palm trees. Then people started migrating. These are some scenes and then we have seen the caliphate of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali and then the Umayyad and the Abbasid and then on and on and on. And then you review the situation of the nation and you would see that it is different from what it was on in the past. You would read glory stories in the past, but you cannot find them nowadays. You would read about jihad and aid and victory in the past, but not nowadays. You would read about the manners of Muslims and their tolerance, and you find it in the past, but not nowadays. And I don't exaggerate if I say that the person would indeed feel sick and would have a headache and sad because of the situation of the Muslims nowadays and their weakness and the division amongst themselves and from the weakness of their economies and by looking to the non-Muslims and trying to copy them. So this is something to lead us to understand the biography of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, and to learn the lessons from it. And then after that, you would understand the reality and how things have turned to what they are now. 
and then you would know how to build your glory just like the prophet peace be upon him built the glory and look at the biography and the demeanor of the prophet peace be upon him when we said the vulnerable and the weak embraced Islam and they were kicked out of Mecca the people of Medina would rejoice because people would migrate to them who have embraced Islam the people of Mecca would be angry and roar when somebody embraces Islam yet the people of Medina would wait patiently for those coming who have embraced Islam the people of Mecca would hope that Muhammad peace be upon him would leave them and get out of the town yet the people in Medina were waiting for the Prophet peace be upon him to come and be with them the people of Mecca plotted to eliminate Islam yet the people in Medina were planning on how to aid Islam and support Islam and look at those different caliphates nowadays we would see that no glory comes to the Muslims but another dark side comes along with it and we see weaknesses yet we see strength coming back again we see jihad we see education flourishing so no time that passes by but you will see some dark sides and bright sides in the history and the present and reality of the nation so whenever there is something saddening on the other side of the token you would see something that will make us rejoice if we would go to Africa we would see people embracing Islam in many numbers and they would embrace Islam not by tens not by hundreds but rather by thousands embracing Islam and believing that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah yes if you even go to Europe and you would see how girls and women embrace Islam young men embrace Islam the scholars and the scientists and the ordinary man embracing Islam because they have seen and witnessed and experienced the tightness in their chests and the miserable life that they live yet they abandoned all that misery and they embraced Islam and also abandoned all that wealth that they had in the past and the glory and they embraced Islam so nowadays we need to spread hope and enthusiasm in the hearts of the nation look at the Prophet peace be upon him he left Ta'if with his feet bleeding he left Ta'if and none embraced Islam and responded to his call despite that the messenger peace and blessings of Allah be upon him has called on Allah to bring about and out from the people who have harmed him those offsprings who would worship Allah look at him at the battle when he had two stones tied to his stomach because of the hunger and Al-Bara ibn al-Azib speaks about a rock that has impeded their way in digging so the Prophet peace be upon him took the axe and he would strike the rock he would say Bismillah I was given the keys of the Levant another time he would say I was given the keys of Persia and then the third time he said I was given the keys to conquer Yemen so we need to uplift the hearts and souls of the Muslims and no will that civilization and pride doesn't come except with two fundamentals if one of them would go away the other would not be useful the first one is knowledge science we need knowledge we need science we need the reciters and those who memorize Quran and the jurists and the specialists in history physics chemistry natural sciences we need knowledge we need science to advance and Allah Almighty said to the Prophet peace be upon him in translation and he did not command him to get anything more except knowledge Allah said oh you Muhammad say oh Allah increase me in knowledge Allah elevates the angels 
and then they have said at some point in time when they were commanded to prostrate out of respect to Adam, they said, glory be to you, we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And look at Musa and his story with the righteous man. And knowledge without will would not benefit. And will without knowledge is indeed using up your energy uselessly because you did not base it on knowledge. This nation will not be in a good shape except by seeking knowledge. I say what you hear and I seek the forgiveness of Allah so you all seek the forgiveness of Allah. All praises due to Allah. May Allah send His peace and blessings to Prophet Muhammad, his household and companions. As to what follows, the theme of this khutbah is a Muslim between the reality and the hope. Then we would say we have to understand the biography of the Prophet and look at him. He is sent when he was 40 years old, calling his people three years in secret, then 10 years in the open and then he would go to Medina, he left Mecca, he left the Qibla and it is the place that we pray toward and he did not demolish the idols except in the eighth year after Hijrah, meaning after 20 years of his advent, meaning he was in Mecca and he was sent with, with monotheism and this is something manifest that Islam came to demolish the worship of idols and worshipping anything that is worshipped besides Allah. Yet the Prophet peace be upon him did not do that in the first, second or third or fourth year, not even in the tenth year and not after he stayed in Medina and the Ansar came and the first step wasn't to go back to Mecca. This didn't happen except later on and this is a call now Oh, you Muslims, to be deliberate, to be patient, to plan and not rush and not expedite. How many projects we have lost, how many land, how much land we have lost, how many young men abandon seeking knowledge because of rushing. So we should be deliberate, we should plan, we should not rush and Islamic movements have committed mistakes because of hurrying and rushing. Us as individuals also committed many mistakes because of rushing. Even states have fallen into mistakes because of rushing. So we should be deliberate and you should be patient as Allah has commanded us. He said seek patience and seek the help of Allah through patience and praying. All you who believe be patient and be more patient than your foes and stay steadfast and it is sufficient for you to know that you may plan for a project and want to establish it and then you are not the one who would reap its fruit. This religion has so many projects you build and somebody else builds and you would build a house, somebody would live in it. So be among those who would put a block in this great building of Islam. When you memorize the book of Allah, when you take up an economic project that benefits the nation and prevents the nation from being poor, will you benefit your nation if you stand against intoxicants and smoking and you would be great caller to Allah if you establish and build a house when there are people worshipping Allah and calling to Allah. Don't rush. Do you know that Britain when it entered India, India was 450 years and also Al-Bukhari or actually it took 150 years. Al-Bukhari took many years to author the book Sahih al-Bukhari and Salah al-Din has planned 
for many, many years before starting his big project. And memorizing the book of Allah, it will not come overnight. Preparing a righteous generation would not come overnight. It would not come in one day, but rather it is an accumulation of efforts seeking the help of Allah as the Prophet, peace be upon him, told Mu'adh bin Jabal, saying to him, O oh Mu'adh, I swear to Allah, I love you. So at the end of each salah, do not forget to say, O oh Allah, help me to remember you and thank you and worship you in the best way. Allah Almighty confers blessings upon the Prophet and his angels ask him to do so. O oh, you who believe, ask Allah to confer blessings upon the Prophet and ask Allah to grant him peace. O oh Allah, send your peace and blessings to Prophet Muhammad and his household like you sent your peace and blessings to Prophet Ibrahim and his household. O oh Allah, forgive the Muslim men and the Muslim women and the believing men and the believing women, those who are alive and those who are dead. Glory be to you, my Lord, above what they ascribe, and peace be upon the messengers, and all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Call out the prayer.